Warning, Lucinda was unavailable this week, so like you're not even going to get her sweet lilt around the fox this time. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by ZipRecruiter, Bokes, and by not forgetting to get the person in your life flowers for Valentine's Day. Flowers for Valentine's Day. Don't be a nozzle. And now, The Scathing Atheist. Hi, I'm Wayne, a professional dog trainer, and while we know that dogs evolve from wolves, we are certain that we did in fact evolve from filthy monkey men. It's January 30th. And it's National Escape Day. You'll never take me alive! I'm No Illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. Oh, damn, he's really gone. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, well, from Richard Kuklinski's New Jersey, uh, Cincinnati <laughs> Swing State, and Good Husband, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. Oh, this week's episode, the Supreme Court rules that the church and state were on a break. Still gone. Okay, uh, and we'll gone. make Jews gay because we're atheists. But first, the diatribe. Did he go out the window? It sounded like he went out the window. Yeah, it went out the window. You ever notice how when religious people accuse science of robbing the world of its mystery, they only bring up fun, inconsequential mysteries, right? Like they get really pissed off that we've explained what a rainbow is, but they're never pining for mysteries like, why do we keep getting cholera? You hear this one from Christians, but also from that whole swath of spiritual, but not religious. And I believe in something nincompoops that we can lump together as irrationalists. And even the phrasing is an admission of guilt. Right. They say that science robbed the world of its mysteries. But I feel like the word you're looking for is solved. Right. <laughs> right. Like, isn't that what mysteries are for? When you answer a question, you haven't stolen it. You, you've given it purpose. A question without an answer is half a thing. It goes against human nature to want an answerless question. If it didn't, people would have loved the finale to Lost. And yet this nostalgia for stupidity is pervasive. And it's pretty clear why. Right. After all, there are an awful lot of careers out there built entirely upon not knowing the answer, but with style. You know, for most of human history, we actually, as a species, didn't know shit. You know, the world's filled with unsolved mysteries everywhere you look. And because humanity is so bad at not knowing the answer, we just started making shit up. Of course, we couldn't prove any of it because it was all made up bullshit. So by means of natural selection, only the flimsiest bullshit survived. Anything that lent itself to direct empirical testing tended to get rooted out. So very naturally, humans created invisible, untestable, unpredictable entities to explain all the mysterious phenomena of the world. And it's not even that humans preferred those answers, right? It's just they were the least testable and therefore the most likely to propagate. And this is working fine, I guess, for thousands of years before science comes along and fucks it up. You know, why do we have all this cholera? Because of sin, probably. And, you know, even if I'm wrong, the net result is less sin. And even if I know I'm making shit up, I don't have to feel guilty about it. After all, anybody else who might answer that question would also be as full of shit as I am. And maybe they'd be worse at it. Maybe they would take advantage of all these people but more than I already do. So it's best for me to defend my bullshit to keep other people from coming along with even worse bullshit. And I guess that moral justification works great until somebody comes along and starts actually reducing cholera. And if morality was a prerequisite for justification, this is the point in the story where religions would just start packing up their fucking tents, right? The first time somebody ever demonstrated that cholera was completely unrelated to sinfulness. But it's not, so they don't. And so now we have people who speak wistfully of universal bewilderment and in so doing elevate ignorance to the level of a virtue. They create an ignorance fetish and call it a love of mystery. Well, look, I love mysteries, too, but the best part is the fucking end, right? 
especially when the mystery is why do people keep vomiting to death? But if you demand virgin intellectual horizon, hey, guess what? Science is the best fucking friend you ever had. The horizon is way bigger than it used to be, and it is expanding constantly at an increasing rate. Every answer brings new questions with it, so there's always more mysteries. Of course, people with the ignorance fetish don't care about that. Right? It's not enough for the mystery to be unsolved. It has to be unsolvable. Because if any question has an answer, like a genuine answer that we can actually, you know, eventually build a consensus around, that answer isn't God. And so they fight us every fucking step of the way because every step towards understanding reality is a step away from religion. And if they just considered that for a few seconds, they'd pack up those tents and go home. But guess what? It's easy not to notice shit like that when you already have an ignorance fetish. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the genitive and vocative to my accusative Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to I don't know, declench? <laughs> it's all about breathing, Noah. It's all about breathing. <laughs> Yeah, we're all about the pegative case. Absolutely. Uh, uh, well, this <laughs> intro just got way more interesting, and Heath and I need some alone time. So we're going to pause for a word from our first sponsor this week, ZipRecruiter. Hi, is this the HR department? Yes, sir. How can I help you? Um, yeah, well, first off, you guys know you have a, a moat? Sir, the sign very clearly says there's a moat to get to HR. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a post-it. In, in Mandarin. Like I said. Okay. So I'm looking to hire some new people for my department. Oh, so you called ZipRecruiter. What's ZipRecruiter? Oh, it's the smartest way to hire. Really? How so? Well, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them for you. Its technology identifies people with the right experience, and it actually invites them to apply for your job. So you get qualified candidates faster. With results like that, it's no wonder that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Wow. But, you know, you guys are the HR department, so I bet you get lots of candidates on the first day, too, huh? No, no. But if you fill out forms ZXB 22 through 47, I will put up a Facebook post for $84,000. Wow, that is not cheap. Well, if you want, you can see why ZipRecruiter is effective for businesses of all sizes. You can try ZipRecruiter for free at our web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to go with ZipRecruiter. Okay, but why don't you take the forms with you just in case? That is, you're handing me a vial of acid right now. That's that's just a vial of acid, isn't it? Read the, the sign. Forms. And now, back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, the beaded curtain of separation of church and state is poised to get that much <laughs> less substantial in a couple of months, <laughs> thanks to Pi Kappa Scotus and the case of Espinosa v. Montana Department of Revenue. Uh, the court heard oral arguments last Wednesday, and based on all the pearl-clutching bullshit from Kavanaugh, I don't think this is going to go well for us. Yeah, this is going to have a serious effect, but more importantly, it has... Montana in the title. That's unacceptable for something that <laughs> yeah. has a serious effect. Right, right. Nothing should echo out from Absolutely Montana not. to where I can hear it. Well, maybe that's part of the strategy, right? They're hoping it'll fly under the radar because nothing ever matters in Montana. Someone maybe. will be like, wait a second, is it? Nah, Montana. <laughs> ah. All right, so here's the case in a nutshell. Montana passes a law giving a tax credit to people who donate to private school scholarships. And since giving taxpayer money and foregoing taxpayer money is effectively the same. And since private school is <laughs> religious school, a solid 80 percent of the time, the Montana Supreme Court said, oh, no, 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 you can't do that and struck this law down. And now, despite the Montana Constitution having an amendment that expressly forbids shit like that, the Supreme Court is going to rethink it for them. Well, I mean, we'll see, because the Supreme Court has plenty of federalists and they're all about states' rights. I'm sure they're going to be yeah, consistent, oh. <laughs> totally intellectually honest on this. I'm not mm -hmm, worried. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. 
You know, sometimes people ask us, like, why we don't make this show a church as a goof or to point out the hypocrisy of religion. And and we don't do that because we like roads and Medicare and shit. But pretty soon, the reason we don't do that is because we're going to be the only ones left to pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So the heart of this issue is what's known as a Blaine Amendment, uh, which 37 U.S. states have. Stop legislating other people's bodies, Blaine Amendment. <laughs> nope. No. <laughs> It's an amendment that forbids direct and (laughs) indirect funding of religious schools. And and by the standards, those cases have always been decided on. It seems like the Montana Supreme Court clearly got this one right. So what's at stake here is the constitutionality of the Blaine Amendment. Stop me if this sounds familiar. The Supreme Court is deciding not whether (laughs) it's legal for states to give churches taxpayer money, but whether it's legal for them not to. Cool. Cool. So Trump's Supreme Court is running a protection racket for Christianity. That's what's happening. And of course, standing out in this disingenuous display of faux persecution was the embodiment of white fear himself, Brett fucking Kavanaugh, who started bitching about how the Blaine Amendment had its roots in anti-Catholic bias, which is about as true as when Christians say Planned Parenthood is because eugenics, or at least would be if Montana hadn't passed their law in the fucking 70s. And when you measure the relevance of what the Blaine Amendment meant in 1875, we should remind everybody that this court has already declared America to be pretty much over racism when they repealed the Voting Rights Act. So, you know, this concern for historic prejudice is new. Yeah, well, I mean, as long as we're correcting stuff that was caused by prejudice, uh, Brett Kavanaugh can go ahead and leave. That'd be great. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Serious question I want to know the answer to. As a lawyer, how would you argue your case in front of Brett Kavanaugh? Yeah. Every time he said something, I'd be like, oh, sorry. Does anybody who didn't cry when talking about boofing with squee on national television last year have a question i just love to get to all their questions first oh, and then we'll get to the boofing with squee going gentlemen. right through jeff blackwell's head every time he's trying to stifle a laugh and in tally ho jews news tonight the orthodox jewish community in stamford hill england which is why that joke i just made is hilarious is resisting efforts by the Office for Standards in Education, <laughs> Children's Services and Skills, or Ofsted, to monitor Jewish schools because, at least according to one Tory counselor, government oversight of education will turn the students into gay atheists. Look, virtually any educational oversight is going to tend them towards atheism. I, I get that but because of the educational part, but I'm dying to know how the gay part works. <laughs> <laughs> I think they um, put their dicks side by side. No, that's, not, the, no that's not what I was asking. <laughs> oh, never mind then. So little backstory here. <laughs> Stanford Hill <laughs> is a home to a very large Orthodox Jewish community, or as I call them, 16th century Polish LARPers. <laughs> <laughs> a LARPing crew just pulled out their AirPods. Hey, fuck you. Fuck you. All right, let's let's go listen to the dollop. Let's listen to a show <laughs> that appreciates us. That respects us, yeah. So these communities forgo traditional education, opting instead for a series of Jewish parochial schools called yeshivas, which teach the study of Torah, but not things like yeah, reading or math <laughs> and not shouting out when the magician is performing. They miss a lot in the okay, yeshivas. But you were palming the card. They were right. Was, that's not the out. point. Was, kind of. <laughs> that's the point. Okay, right. So Ofsted noticed this and has proposed monitoring things like whether students with disabilities are being accommodated and whether the girls are taught that they're human beings, you know, liberal, atheist, gay shit like that. And as a result, Tory counselor Aaron Klein is freaking out. Eli? But are the guys talking about latest greatest Jewish freak out? Thank you, me. So here's what Klein had to say, quote, and I'm going to do the voice because you all know the voice is what he speaks like. Okay. The Haredi community prides itself with a youth clean and pure from crime. The The way they do it. Doesn't he have a British Jewish accent? Yeah. I I can't do it. Can't do it. (laughs) Blood just started to come out of my nose. You all heard Heath try to kill me just now. I say the Haredi community. No, I just turn into like a. 
like the alien thing when she opens it and it's like, kill me. I mean, and again, <laughs> uh, I'm going straight. <laughs> the Harari community prides itself with a youth clean and pure from crime. Most boys and girls are getting married around the age of 19 after years of learning in yeshiva to respect your partner. We pride ourselves with a divorce rate of one out of ten. Why bring Ofsted to our yeshivas? They give the children's ideas of atheist, gay, early childhood sex. We don't need all this. Thank you. End quote. Okay, they have their own ideas for early childhood sex? <laughs> right. I feel like they should defer to the experts here. I'd like I just, them to not decide on that. Is atheist a type of sex? What am I missing out on here? I I, I love the, here. This group of people is desperately trying to think of something that their students aren't worse at than all the other people. And all they can come up with is lower divorce rates because they've largely stripped women of their autonomy. But that's yep. it. Right. Yep. Yeah. The top five percent in honor killing. What do you mean? That's not good. I said top five percent. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, when he was asked by the press if he had um, heard what he just said. <laughs> That's fifth percentile, not 95th. You're doing it backwards, man. Yeah. So Klein pivoted to Mayor Phil Glanville, who is gay, saying, quote, You mentioned Philip Glanville. I believe he is gay. Good luck to him. No, thank you. We don't want Ofsted coming and mixing, confusing our children for us. It's Adam and Eve, a man and a woman, <laughs> a boy and a girl, and real quote. Okay, wow. I was joking before, but they really do have their own ideas for early childhood sex. They just confirmed it. It's a weird flex. <laughs> Indeed. Christ. Also, good luck. What, what did that mean? <laughs> good luck to him? <laughs> he concluded by taking a shot at Ofsted's science requirements, saying, quote, we teach our children that God created the world some 6,000 years ago within six days and rested in the seventh. Ofsted comes in and says you must also teach the atheist version. The world was made by itself from evolution millions of years ago. Leave us alone. It's all baloney and real quote. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, given the masterful understanding he just demonstrated, I think we can all trust his assessment. But 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 now that I know that we'd have to stop lying as the next argument down from the divorce one, I can see why they pull that one out of the quiver so quickly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this story actually does have a happy ending. Really? Uh, rare for our show. Yeah. As of right now, it looks like Ofsted will get its way. They're going to go into schools and... Mayor Phil Glanville, who uh, Klein mentioned, delivered the following scathing statement at the Hackney Council oh. meeting the following week. And he had quote, some good luck, I guess. Oh, so. yeah, for sure. Good. Quote, we reiterate. Oh, wait a minute. You're not going to do his voice? That would be kind of racist to and, not do his. That's weird. All right. Yes. No. Um, here we are, Marsh. There we go. I'm, uh, Michael Marshall. Here we go. We reiterate the commitments we made to stand up to hate. <laughs> Whether it's anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or indeed homophobia. Anyone who has opened the Hackney Gazette recently will see that there are people in this chamber who don't share those values and make cheap attacks, including on me. I would use some of Klein's words to say politely, No thanks to you, Mr. Klein. No thanks to your bigotry. No thanks to your views on bus lanes, red routes, what? or diversity. The role of Ofsted or myriad other things. Sorry, they have an Old Testament understanding of bus lanes? They do, That's yes. dying to be its own story. <laughs> <laughs> he continued, it's also a no thank you to your view of morality. You do not have a view of morality that is suitable for this chamber or this council. When you question Ofsted, you're questioning your commitment to keep all of our children safe. End badass motherfucking quote. Yeah, <laughs> drop a mic. <laughs> and next up in headlines, in Go Fuck Yourself News with an E-A-U-X on Go. New Orleans Saints are apparently heading up the football-related wing of evil Christianity. And that's kind of impressive, considering they're part of the NFL, yeah. which seems to be a sports <laughs> league with a Christian bigotry theme among their owners. And the Saints are a standout within that group. Impressive. And that includes helping the Catholic Church cover up 
for pedophiles. That's what the saints did. Wow. Mm. Wow. Like that would be like being the rapey NFL team. It's actually. Hard to, oh, sorry. Wait, yeah. Sorry. No, that would be like being the domestic abusey You're NFL. Run into the, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, you, got, you have more yeah. stuff. <laughs> so, just in case anyone missed it, here's a little background on the Saints. Their superstar quarterback, Drew Brees, does advocacy work with the anti LGBT hate group Focus on the Family. Yep. Classy. Also, they had an internal bounty system for grievously injuring opposing players. Yep. Not really Christianity related, but I'm sure they sent. Thoughts and prayers to the victims, so that's nice. <laughs> yeah, no, but to be clear, there was no rule that they had to wake back up within 48 hours. No, yeah. not mentioned. And then we found out last week that the senior vice president for communications for the Saints, Greg Bensel, basically their top PR guy, he was helping out the Archdiocese of New Orleans with their messaging in terms of how to release their giant list of clergy members who were credibly accused of sexually abusing kids. A person with that information exists, and the Saints pay him a six-figure salary to be an expert on messaging like that. Wait, why did did they think about that team because of the name? They assumed that the Saints would be the most Catholic team? <laughs> I maybe, mean, you know. <laughs> maybe they were right. Wow. Also, I want to hear that advice, right? Like he's on the phone and he's like, all right. Have you tried having people form their identities around your team so that when people inside it do bad stuff, it has to compete <laughs> with their sort of hometown loyalty for the, oh, that's your whole thing. Yep. All, all right. Well, you know what? Let me get back to you. Let me get back to you. That's, kind of, <laughs> that's what we've been using. There's a lot of synergy here. You got to yeah. admit. Yeah. So here's how we found out about all this. One of the priests uh, that was, Rapists. We're going to say rapists. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one vowel away from an anagram. It's, sure. <laughs> yeah. Close. Yeah. One of the rapists is currently being prosecuted and the plaintiff's legal team requested a whole bunch of documents about the internal communication within the church. And among that evidence, they found 276 documents linking the archdiocese with the New Orleans Saints. The Catholic Church wanted to know how to put a positive spin on employing a long list of rapists and somebody was like, oh, no, no, we're, we're good. I know an NFL guy. <laughs> we're perfect. I'll go ahead and send him an email using our church computer. And Greg Bensel at the Saints got that email and he was like, yeah, no, I am perfect for this. Let me explain in a whole bunch more emails using my company computer. That all happened. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, given some of the things Eli has made me email back and forth about with my company computer, I don't want to cast any stones on that part of the story. <laughs> okay, fine. Not stones. Can we throw paintballs at Neil Gorsuch? <laughs> no. No. And in persecute that you think that news tonight, Bishop Vincent Matthews what? Jr., World Missions President of the predominantly African-American and 5.5 million member Church of God in Christ, took a moment during his church's celebration of Martin Luther King <laughs> Jr. to introduce Vice President <sighs> Mike Pence and call him one of the most persecuted Christians in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he might get persecuted all the way into the Oval Office. It sounds. Oh yeah, think real of all rough. the persecution. Uh, well, like, White I, well, people given from that, Indiana. Like all of Americans, Christians are tied at zero in terms of persecution. Sure, one of the isn't the wrong designation. <laughs> sure, That's fair. Yeah. So <laughs> here's the quote. One thing I love about this man of God, you know, if you don't know anything, and holy shit, does the rest of this sentence count on that? <laughs> is that he is one of the most persecuted Christians in America. The biggest criticism that he gets all over television and everywhere else is that he actually believes in the Bible. They hate him for believing in the Bible, end quote. Yeah, right. Just like MLK. Same reason. Yep. 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 The White House is basically a Birmingham jail. It's like, <laughs> well, no, no. The, Very similar. The, the, the Birmingham jail had black guys in it. So, <laughs> I mean... Still does. <laughs> right. So yeah. Pence responded to this weird praise by calling the introduction overly generous. So even Pence didn't buy that bullshit. And 
In his speech, he talked about how MLK was an inspiration to him in his youth and how great the Trump administration has been for black people, explaining almost, quote, you guys were some of the very fine people just on the other side. He said bold. (laughs) Yeah, right. You were included. (laughs) Compliment. All right. Well, clearly we're doing a shit job at this Christian persecution thing, so we're going to need a quick huddle. And while we do that, we'll hear from our second sponsor this week, Books. Hello, welcome to typical florist experience. How can I help you? Are you, um, Floon Pop from our D&D campaign? No, all florists just happen to sound like me, don't you know? Okay, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I was looking to get some flowers for my wife for Valentine's Day. Ah, so you went to books.com, did you? No, I'm, I'm here. What's books? Uh, it's short for bouquets, my boy. B-O-U-Q-S dot com. They offer a variety of beautifully styled bouquets, sweet treats, plants, gifts, and succulents, you know. And, okay, so what do you have here? Ah, well, I have some very, very dead flowers for $875 minimum. That's pricey. Is everything that expensive at Books? Oh, not at all, old chap. They have bloom starting at $39, don't you know? And they're, you know, alive and some such. Yeah, Books sent us some sample bouquets, and they weren't just beautiful. They smelled amazing, too. And they're still looking good. Heath, what what are you doing here? Oh, I, I just like to hang out here um, in this universe here. It's quiet, you know. Yeah, good, good to know. Yeah. Uh, hey, that reminds me. Uh, Mr. Florist, if I forget till, say, Valentine's Day and I need flowers sent right away, can you help with that? Oh, good heavens, no. I won't even help you carry your flowers to your car. Cool. Um, But Books can help, right? Oh, indeed they can. The Books company is nationwide and offers next as well as same day delivery. So, uh, Mr. Florist, if you don't mind me asking... How come Books.com is so much better than you? Ah, the Books Company works with some of the world's finest eco-friendly farms. Because their flowers are sourced directly, they arrive fresher and live longer. Now, can I interest you in a creaky pa orchid from the jungles of Myanmar? And it's dead. It it died while you were talking about it? Oh, yes. The creaky pa is very sensitive to gossip. Got it. Okay, well, I appreciate it, but I think I'm just going to go with Books. Ah, I see. Well, you can get 25% off your order from the Books Company by going to books.com slash scathing and checking out with the code scathing. That's B-O-U-Q-S dot com slash scathing? Mm-hmm, that's right. And there's the link in the show notes, don't you know? Great. Well, <laughs> oh, you've killed all my flowers. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be. And we're back. Next up in headlines. Donald Trump's spiritual advisor and ghost of Eleanor Shellstrop future, Paula White, <laughs> made headlines twice this week. Kirsten, Kristen Bell is terrified of that. She's absolutely terrified. That's <laughs> not a good, that's a nightmare for her all the time if she knows who Paula White is. Anyway, uh, yeah, Donald Trump's spiritual advisor, Paula White, two different reasons she was in the headlines. And neither was a journalist just screaming into a camera that, Paula White has more access to the president of the goddamn United States than the Washington Post does. Yeah, right. (laughs) Would have been a very reasonable segment if that had been the thing I'm talking about. But no, Paula White made the news for presenting mathematical proof that prayer reduced crime after 9-11. And then Mm -hmm. the next day, Mm -hmm. she made the news for testing out some other powers of prayer by asking God... To miscarry all the satanic <laughs> pregnancies yes. out there. Not exaggerating. Yes. Oh, Paula, Paula, Paula. You got to space that shit out, girl. It's about consistent brand awareness. <laughs> You're doing too much up front. Wow. Yeah. All right. So let's, I guess we'll start with the 9-11 thing. Even though Christians with magical powers decide to start after 9-11 in their yeah. magical prevention of crime. <laughs> mm, yeah. So she's up at her podium doing a sermon, and if if you haven't watched her do one of these, it's worth a quick look, because she tries to make 
her little sermons in, into a rap and yep. she like claps along to herself. <laughs> yes. But she has the rhythm of a 53 year old white lady from Mississippi. So she almost injures herself <laughs> so, every time. Like Steve Martin in the church. It's yeah. very <laughs> like there's a reason I don't try to do rap either. And neither does Steve Martin. Yeah. yeah. Cause, cause you're both 53 year old white ladies from Mississippi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Right. Obviously. <laughs> So she's doing whatever you call that. And she says, do you know that they said when we prayed during 9-11 that crime went down more than anything because it took tragedy for the righteous to pray? And <laughs> who is they, you might ask? Oh, oh, is it go fuck myself? Uh, correct. Yes. Go fuck <laughs> yourself. She continues. <laughs> it is statistically proven because of the power of prayer that crime across this nation and across the world drastically went down. And by statistically proven, she means end quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what statistical proof would look like in that instance, but it wouldn't look like the crime rate failing to drop in the year 2001 for the first time in nine years. It was, and that's not yeah. what it would look like. Would there. not look like that? No. And that brings us to the Prayer for miscarriages from the pro-life advocate. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's doing her impossibly offer them clapping thing again the very next day. A and this time it's going so badly that she has to physically brace herself against falling over from bad rhythm by grabbing her lectern. Seriously, watch the video. <laughs> but here's the problem. The lectern's wobbling like that shitty table at TGI Fridays that needs coasters to shim it. And <laughs> she's starting to panic, but she keeps going. And she says, quote, we cancel every surprise from the witchcraft, like wobbly stuff. For example, <laughs> we come against the Marine kingdom. We come against the animal kingdom. And okay. Oh, I I'm going to stop right there for a quick question. Um, what? <laughs> Do you guys know what the fuck she's talking about? I mean, what does she think fish are is both a logical question to draw from that and not one of the top 10 weirdest things you need to know at the end of her saying that. <laughs> or, okay, theory, maybe fish hate Paula White as much as we do? Okay. That's a possible. Maybe. She got bit by a fish? Well, regardless, <laughs> uh, she then closed it out by saying, we break the power in the name of Jesus. We command any satanic pregnancies to miscarry right now. End exact quote. So, uh, follow-up question. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. No, great question. God, she, well, you know, if we believe that they believe what they believe, she just asked God to murder human babies, right? Yep. I mean, yeah. It's a good thing That's they don't actually happened. believe what they believe, or that would be criminally fucked up. Yep. And then, yet, they don't call it the pedophile news tonight. If you're challenged to prove that the Catholic Church still isn't taking its responsibility to protect children from sexually abusive predators seriously by asking only one question— You'd have a lot of choices, actually. That would be super <laughs> easy. Um, but one of the questions that's somewhere on that list is, why the fuck they haven't taken all the various lists of credibly accused priests and mushed them together on one list that, say, could be searchable online? Well, luckily, the good folks at ProPublica, and this is demonstrably true, care more about protecting children from pedophile priests than the Catholic Church does because they went ahead and did that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great stuff. Good work um, for exposing evil people in general. But for Catholics, at a certain point, it's like, uh, wow, you know, most of these apples are rotten. Why Why am I even in this barrel? That's weird. They say, right. they say even one is a problem. And I'm in this barrel. Maybe just don't be Catholic. What are you doing? Okay, wait. So you're saying that the the good apples in the barrel are invisible. I just can't see. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get out of the barrel. I'm yeah. going to get out of the barrel. I'm going right. to get out here. And I'm getting raped by an apple. Yep. <laughs> so, 
So the uh, searchable database, which you'll find linked in the show notes, was compiled from 178 lists released by U.S. dioceses and religious orders. Uh, so to be clear, information the Catholic Church could have released in this format at any fucking time. And it's also woefully incomplete, because even if we believe that the lists that have been released are comprehensive, even though they've been demonstrated not to be multiple times, as the site points out, 41 of the nation's 145 dioceses haven't released anything at all. But even given all that missing data, the list contains 5,800 names, about half what of whom fuck? are still alive. Well, honestly, if, if the Catholic Church sues ProPublica for, like, copyright violation, I will not be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> That's not question. I feel like I feel like Devin Nunez is somehow being slandered, too. So well, yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's in there. Yeah, he Fuck should. his lawyers. Probably so. And, and let me save everybody else the trouble of looking it up, by the way. There are something like 35,000 Catholic priests in this entire goddamn country. That means that of the living priests in the U.S., about one in 12 has been credibly accused of sexual abuse. Jesus and, and, Christ. Yeah, right. And since every time. And a, that's low. Well, exactly. Exactly. Since every time a diocese releases another list, it's A, got a shit ton of new names on it, and B, is later proven to be incomplete. All we can say for certain is that the real number of predator priests is significantly higher than one in 12. Then what? That's terrifying. It's too big. This is a big number. You're illegal. The whole that's illegal. Any group nope. that's that's your number, you can't be allowed. Yeah. Nambla. Nambla has lower numbers. <laughs> it probably does. It. it probably does, yeah. yes. Lower. Ah. And in not in a Brazilian years news. Okay, tonight. that's that's your one. Fair, <laughs> fair. Murderer and guy who wants to fist fight Jesus, President <laughs> Jair Bolsonaro. Jair Bolsonaro, yeah. Yep, him. Continued his <laughs> campaign of being bizarro universe Donald Trump this week by appointing a creationist to run the agency that oversees graduate study programs within the Ministry of Education. Jesus. <laughs> Side note, Eli apparently owns a bunch of Superman comics set in a Latino universe? <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, no, I, I don't think he does because... Let's be clear. Bolsonaro is just South American Donald Trump, right? right. B Bizarro universe Trump would be a an intelligent secular leader who was <laughs> right. removed from office for a crime he didn't commit and <laughs> and had a goatee, probably. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, the appointee is one Benedito Guermamarez. Oh my God. <laughs> Ag Aguitar <laughs> Nito. Do we need to and he Nito. is now going to be in charge of the, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. You are not. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and say you are not ahead. Coordinate. Wow. C with a tail. <laughs> swooshy A. You didn't, you didn't try to say that. O, <laughs> D. Aper. Passover. Mento. Niner. Del Did I catch a niner? Pesao. De Neville Superior, or, or as they call it, capes. Okay, capes is a word, but I mean, you, you're using <laughs> as, is, as is, as is, or. No, thank you. Or. Yep. Thank yeah. you. Partial credit. So, according to Science Magazine, quote, Nito was recently quoted in a press release as saying that intelligent design should be introduced into Brazil's basic education curriculum as a counterpoint to the theory of evolution so that creationism could be supported by scientific arguments. No. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. First of all, no. Correct. <laughs> also... I love that he thinks we'll do the work for creationism. Right. Yes. Like you just shove it into our science area and we'll sprinkle some science on yes, it for you. Right. Science up that creationism. <laughs> Fuck you. It's like the friend when you're smoking and your friend comes over and he's like, oh, let me get a hit off that. And you're just like, oh, no creationism. You can't. <laughs> we asked if anyone wanted to throw in. No creationism. You're a bad roommate. <laughs> right. So as you can imagine, actual scientists in Brazil are not psyched about this really yeah in that same article evolutionary biologist antonio carlos marquez of the university of sao paulo's institute of biosciences said quote it is completely illogical to place someone Wouldn't he have who like promoted a brazilian portuguese accent <laughs> yeah he would um let me let me do it for you now mm. it is completely illogical <laughs> 
to place someone whose promoted actions, contrary to scientific consensus, in a position to manage programs that are essentially of scientific training. <laughs> End quote. Not adding, please don't murder me, though, you crazy Bond villain of a yeah, president. Right. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to close off the headlines for the night. Heat, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll get downright festive. Last month, we tried out a new segment that was partly motivated by our desire to expand the list of holidays atheists can lay claim to, and partly by the fact that I could have sworn we still had a How Bullshit Is It segment that we hadn't used, but I was wrong, and it was Christmas Day, and the episode was due out the next morning, and these guys were out of town. But due to the overwhelmingly positive response, <laughs> read more than one person said they liked it, and nobody said they hated it, we're pleased to present another installment of The Holiday Buffet. The idea here is simple. As an atheist who celebrates Christmas, I can assure you that we're allowed to celebrate whichever holidays we want. They have to let us. In so <laughs> we're dipping into the rest of the religions this year and offering up a few more choices for what you might want to celebrate in February. Heath, you picked the earliest holiday. So why don't you start us off? Which All February right. holiday did you select? I went with Setsubun from Shintoism. So uh, here's here's a few details about it to start you off. What we're commemorating. The day before the beginning of spring in Shintoism, they're, they're pretty sure that happens on February 3rd. <laughs> Where it's celebrated. Mostly Japan. When it's celebrated. Again, somehow, February 3rd is the eve of spring in their head. Huh. <laughs> Best aspect. Gender reversal exercises. That's a pretty good aspect. Right? Yeah, I like it. Worst aspect. Age reversal exercises. Uh, and that, that could be cool, but I mean, like, especially in situations where ignorant people think prostitution is happening and there are age reversal exercises going on. Anytime when people mistakenly think that prostitution is happening, that's a problem. Or just that. <laughs> yep. Keith, what are the situations where age reversal exercises are cool? Uh, like. You can wear a diaper. I can with, wear a diaper. It's, uh, okay. Not what I was going to say, but no, yeah, no, I had an answer right away. We'll go with that. <laughs> and uh, one more little detail for you. How it's celebrated. And it is celebrated with girthy sushi. Like nice. Super wide, uncut sushi. <laughs> also silence and also throwing stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll explain when we get Those there. Those two don't usually go together. Yeah. Okay. So here's why Setsubun would be a holiday for the beginning of spring on February 3rd. It's meant to be a New Year's Eve for the lunisolar calendar. So spring wasn't defined by the equinox. It was just the first season after winter. And they decided winter would end and spring would begin on lunar New Year's Day, which became February 4th. So Setsubun was meant to be a day of cleansing to get rid of all the evil built up over the last year and to drive away the demons who are trying to start you off on the new year with more evil. And this led to a ritual called Mame Maki, which means bean scattering. What? You know, naturally, because demons hate beans. Yeah, demons are all keto or have IBS. It's one or the other. <laughs> well, that's why I love holidays, right? There's always a twist ending in the description if you haven't heard of it before. So I was like, <laughs> thing that kind of makes sense, thing that logically follows from that. And then we write our names in magic butter. You know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the Mame Maki ritual is traditionally carried out by the Toshiotoko of the household. That's the person in the family who's born on a year that has the same. Chinese zodiac sign as the year being entered on the day after Setsubun. And by person, of course, I mean male person. Obviously. And if nobody lines up with the right zodiac sign, it's just the head of the household. And this person picks a different family member to dress up with a demon mask and go outside and then try to walk back in the door. But when they do, the Toshiotoko throws a bunch of roasted soybeans in their face and slams the door. Oh, 
it's it's not clear how long they have to commit to the bit, but somebody ends up getting hit in the face with beans and then has to stand outside for a, a while, like some in amount of February. Time. That's rough. Yeah. You, you know, kids, your mother used to let me throw seeds in her face all the time before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> the general idea is that the beans and the little skit are a symbol of purification. And then it's time to bring some luck for the coming year. So everyone eats one roasted soybean for each year of their life, sometimes plus one for extra luck. Okay, idea for the U.S. version, your Toki Toshobi has to dress up as a what? demon and try to get past the American gladiators. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, no, the U.S. version of this automatically has a bean rifle. So this is adding up. This is all yep. going to work. <laughs> it's all coming together. All right. Some good ideas for our version. And that brings us to the eating part. My favorite part. In some parts of Japan, it's customary on Setsubun to eat a type of furomaki or fat rolls called ihomaki. And ihomaki literally translates to lucky direction roll. So as part of the ritual, you eat while facing in the coming year's lucky compass direction, what? which corresponds to that year's zodiac symbol. Compass-wise, I don't know. And <laughs> you're, you're, you're supposed to eat in complete silence also, which means plenty of people, I'm sure, must fuck up the compass thing, but they can't ask questions or argue about it because of the silence thing, except oh. maybe like frantic hand signals. I don't know what they do, but it's probably funny to watch. I got to say, I am all about a shutting the fuck up based holiday. I love though. that part. Yeah. We just <laughs> shut up and fucking eat. That's like part of the thing. That's so good. Amazing. Yeah. So part of the tradition for Setsubun is based on the idea that the new year was the time when the spirit world and the physical world got really close to each other. <laughs> Physically close, I guess. So yep. the demons w would see a guy with a super anti-demonic bigot mask getting pelted with beans and they'd stay away. But the demons would sometimes get close enough to mess with any tools that you might have left outside of your house. Of course, as, as demons are wont to yeah, do. Demon, demons are wont to do that. And I, I guess the demons would set up pranks with the tools, like they'd <laughs> hide a rake in the grass so you'd step on it like a cartoon character and get hit in the face. I don't know. Well, regardless, that's why it's customary to bring all your tools inside on Setsubun. Is it not customary to put away your shit on all the other days? Fuck, it should be. Right? Like, just, does all of Shintoism need a talking to from Heath's dad? It does. <laughs> it needs some, maybe some uh, toothpicks, some lessons. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> right in your ehumaki. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why it's not cut. So, one last thing. This leads to my best and worst. Setsubun is considered to exist outside of the normal time dimension in a sense that's, that's tricky <laughs> yeah it's tricky and shintoism decided to celebrate that a temporality by practicing role reversal in both age but also in gender so young girls dress up like old women and vice versa and people sometimes take part in cross-dressing too and apparently this custom is still practiced today among traditional geisha and their clients while entertaining on the day of Setsubun. Now, sadly, plenty of idiot tourists think geisha are prostitutes. So this must lead to very upsetting moments when combined with the age reversal thing. But it seems like it has the potential to be a super interesting day of gender and age bending when nobody's being stupid and ignorant. I, I th And like, you know, again, we get to do however we want with the atheism holidays. So let's let's get into it. Sorry, Keith, call me stupid and ignorant. Yeah, uh, you're stupid and ignorant. What are geishas if not prostitutes? Are they accountants? <laughs> no. But sometimes, dude, sometimes massage parlors really just give you massages. There's, but, but what are geishas? What no, are they, geishas? They are like practiced in the skills of music and entertainment and like yeah, poetry and conversationalism and not fucking you for money. That's like not what that is. Eli and I learned all that. I'm surprised you forgot <laughs> the lesson we learned when we were in Tokyo. Anyway, um, that's Setsubun. Bean throwing, demons, 
directional sushi luck and maybe an interactive seminar on gender studies. I don't know. Cool. <laughs> cool stuff. I'm in. I'm in. All right. So my holiday is way worse. I picked Nirvana Day. Okay. What we're commemorating. The death of Buddha. All right. No, if you don't want to meditate, just say so. You don't have to be nasty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's celebrated. East Asia, uh, mostly by Mahayana Buddhists. When it's celebrated. February 15th for most people, but some people do it on the 8th just to fuck up the formula. Best aspect. Uh, sitting still is easy. It's so hard. What? So hard. So it's hard. It's so difficult. <laughs> it's so much harder than everybody thinks. So, going so into hard. Meditation. It's so hard. It's very oh difficult. God. It's not. I've been hitting. I've been hit on my body with sticks so many times because it's not easy for me. <laughs> Worst aspect. Getting hit by sticks. Apparently. Sometimes <laughs> yeah, it's like a wake up is. stick. It's not like a smash you in the face mm -hmm. stick, but it's mm -hmm. like a they, it's, it's smaller than your thumb. It's okay. Do nothing. <laughs> Pop back down. <laughs> How it's celebrated. Literally doing nothing. It's very hard. Though. It's but, very no, difficult. it's not. It's tricky. Okay. Nothing. So Nirvana it's Day new. or <laughs> Para Nirvana Day is the anniversary of the Buddha's death at the age of 80. Uh, he died surrounded by monks and his last words are said to be all conditioned things are subject to decay. Strive for your liberation with diligence. But that's definitely bullshit, right? His last words were almost <laughs> certainly like, I think I pooped a little and then he died or something. I'm dying. Okay, last thing. Don't make this into a religion. I pooped. <laughs> and I'm dead. <laughs> Fuck, I ended on pooped. Damn uh, it. I ended, I ended on I'm dead. <laughs> I, to be fair, though, to be fair, still better than Joseph Smith, even no, if that's that. true. True that. <laughs> and of course, as this is a Buddhist holiday, uh, you celebrate it by doing nothing. So there's really not much for me to say here, but if you've been looking for an excuse to test drive meditation, it's a pretty solid excuse to give it a whirl. That would be on uh, February 15th. Maybe you can meditate on why you forgot the previous day was Valentine's Day. That's right. If only someone had a blog that could guide our secular listeners through the practice. How's that blog going, by the way? Good? Not the point, Heath. That is not the point. You putting up a lot of posts? <laughs> hey, hey, Eli, do you have a holiday? Yes, my holiday is Blog Ash, Day. Fuck you. <laughs> Ash Wednesday. What we're commemorating. The beginning of Lent and of dying and turning to dust. Where it's celebrated. All over the world. When it's celebrated. Ash Wednesday is exactly 46 days before Easter Sunday, which, as we all know, is a movable holiday based on the cycles of the moon. Fun fact for Noah and literally nobody else, the earliest date Ash Wednesday can occur is February 4th, and the latest date Ash Wednesday can occur is March 10th. Best aspect. Telling people that they have something on their faces, or... <laughs> <laughs> As was my tradition when I worked in the city, drawing a smiley face on my forehead in eyebrow pencil and telling people <laughs> that your priest has Parkinson's when they ask about it. <laughs> Worst aspect? Getting a lazy priest and looking like a bird shat on your head all day. Hey, well, first runner up, just getting touched by a Catholic priest. Yep, you know where that's that finger spend, man. Fair. Do birds shit ash? Some of them. <laughs> Jersey birds. <laughs> Jersey birds, too. <laughs> How it's celebrated. Smudgy foreheads and giving up something you like. All right, so most of our listeners will probably be aware of Ash Wednesday, either because they used to be Catholic or, like me, once a year everyone looks like an Elizabethan coal miner. But <laughs> not a lot of people know its ins and outs, or more importantly, why we should absolutely keep doing this. Yeah, I mean, what? hell, I don't know that last part, and I've read the script, so... Why we should <laughs> keep having Ash Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so All right. Here's the problem with Christianity Oh, right here? You found it? <laughs> I found it, everybody <laughs> Get excited here, finally, no, we finally, finally, finally found it We've been doing this for years <laughs> Eli has found the problem With yeah, Christianity, it, please go ahead Refer people back to 363. Now they'll know. So when Christianity took over all the pagan holidays, they very quickly realized that when the only celebration you have is their guy who died, you basically have two holidays, right? Like when he was born and when he died. Yep. So as the church grew in age and austerity, they had to make more and more of Jesus's life into fan fiction so they could celebrate the summer solstice and shit. Enter Lent. 
the final season of Game of Thrones of Holiday. Now, <laughs> originally, Lent was Spoilers. a 40-day fast starting on Ash Wednesday to commemorate the 40 days Jesus wandered in the desert arguing with Barack Obama. What? I'm sorry, Barack Obama? Oh, yeah. Pretty sure Eli's only seen the History Channel special. So oh, yeah. okay. Yep. Got it. Yeah. Okay, but like all things Christianity, a 40-day sunrise to sunset fast got softened to, you know, give up chocolate, which then got softened to give up something entirely intangible like anger so that all your fucking (laughs) aunt has to do is post on Facebook that she was giving up anger and then she was good. (laughs) Oh, you gave up anger for Lent? Really? Cool. Cool. Uh, will you stop being Catholic if I prove you wrong? That feels impossible and you're stupid. Right. But a lot of people wonder, like, where do the ashes come from? Well, according to Wikipedia, the head pudding part starts with Gregory the First, who was Pope from 540 to 604 A.D. And and what you have to understand here is that back in the year 600, the ashes were probably like the nicest thing you owned, right? Right. Yeah. Especially. <laughs> and I think. I, I think I read that the ashes have to be the burned palms from Palm Sunday the year before. Yeah. yeah. yeah Last exactly. year's. So they ashes. have to like keep just a weird collection of ashes all year. Yeah. Leading up to the next Ash Wednesday. Mm hmm. Lots of smudgy kid fucking documents going on in the back. <laughs> now, <laughs> nowadays, many churches practice something known as ashes to go. So starting in 2007, many priests from Catholic, Anglican, and Lutheran denominations started going to public places and just giving forehead crosses to anyone who asked for it. And this trend of ashes to go can get, I'm going to say, a little extreme. According to Wikipedia, quote, on Ash Wednesday 2017, Father Patty Mooney the priest of St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church in the Irish town of Glen Maddy. <laughs> Sorry, the stereotypes there are just really <laughs> That's pretty amazing, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that guy, Hoity McToity, okay. set up an ashes to go station through which commuters could drive and receive ashes from their car. <laughs> Jesus. The parish church also had a drive through prayers during Lent, which what? people submitted requests into a box left in the church grounds without having to leave their car. (laughs) Jesus. Is it weird if I ask you to supersize my forehead (laughs) smudge? Just just an Amazon drone flying past people, shooting them in the head with an ash gun. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Done. Perfect. Teamed up. So I know what you're asking. You're saying, Eli, okay, that history is fine. But why should we keep Ash Wednesday? Well, I think we could all use a day where our stupid is written on our forehead. Think of it. Each S Wednesday, we could arise as a nation and write our silliest and biggest misdeeds of the year upon our foreheads for the world to see, because for just one day, we all deserve to feel what it's like to have a face tattoo. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, you've got a few more holidays to choose from at home. Take one, two, three or none. You're an atheist. You get to do shit like that. And we'll see if we can offer you a few more March selections on the next Holiday Buffet. Before we hoist the 363 episodes trophy tonight, I want to let you know that despite what I might have previously reported, there actually are a couple of tickets left for the L.A. show on February 15th. We were able to add a couple of seats, which is awesome because that show sold out crazy fucking fast. So if you missed your opportunity to get tickets the first time around, don't do that to yourself again. Think about how awful it felt when you learned it the first time and then check the show notes for a link. Get your tickets quick. Anyway, that's all the blast movie we've got for you tonight. But we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show, The Skeptic Crowd, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Monday. An even new episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. And an even newer episode of our half sister show, Citation Nita, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I'd bring shame upon my family if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for putting the sir in absurd. I want to thank Eli Bosnick for putting the him in whimsical and I want to thank the lovely and talented Lucinda Lusions for putting the oh my in comical. I also want to thank Wayne for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. Dude, don't tell Heath your job exists or it's going to fuck up our whole thing. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people. John, Eric, Josh, David, Beelzebub's favorite Heath and Chris, Wanda, Rubik's Tesseract, Jim, Jay, and Jane. John, Eric, Josh, and David, whose orgasms are Mount St. Helens primary what I was going for examples. Beelzebub 
Beelzebub's favorite heathen, Chris and Wanda, whose sexual magnetism is the only reason the magnetosphere is even allowed to take breaks, and Rubik's Tesseract, Jim, Jay, and Jane, whose IQs are so high the DEA asked their intellects for a urine sample. Together, these 11 illustrious illustrators of elegance elevated our eloquent elegies about the illogic of illegitimate illumination this week by giving us money. Not everybody with money can give some to us, but if you can, you should. You should make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist, whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help, but not in the money way, you can follow at PIATPod on Twitter, and if you'd like to help, but not in the following us on Twitter kind of way, stop being so goddamn complicated and just communicate your needs with us. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media and our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingadius.com. Most boys and girls are getting murdered. <laughs> Not murdered. <laughs> he continued. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.